At the turn of the decade in 1990, the handheld console war was in full swing, with Nintendo's Game Boy in the lead. Companies like Atari, NEC, and Tiger Electronics all wanted to chip away at Nintendo's dominance. But the only company that could do so was Sega, with their own handheld, the Game Gear. The Sega Game Gear was essentially a miniature Sega Mega Drive. It has 8-bit graphics and sound like the Mega Drive, the NES, and the Game Boy. Its design was ahead of its time. Aside from its large buttons and comfortable grip, the Game Gear had a bright and vibrant color LCD, the likes not seen on other handhelds of its day. In fact, the screen was so good, it was capable of showing live TV. Despite its pros, the Game Gear had more cons coming after it. During its production period, the Game Gear was plagued with bad capacitors that killed its sound, rendered its screen unviewable, and made the AC adapter port useless. Anyone skilled with a soldering iron can remedy the problems with a set of new capacitors, but the average 8-12 to year old would have just exchanged the Game Gear for a new one. While the Game Gear is a portable gaming system, it barely fit the definition. The Game Gear required 6 AA batteries, and it only lasted 4-6 to six hours of continuous use. This is due to the Game Gear's faster processor and excellent LCD. Carrying extra batteries made it troublesome, and using an AC adapter made it impractical. Then there was the Game Gear's size. The size made the Game Gear difficult to carry everywhere, as it stuck sorely out of pockets, and it barely fit into crowded book bags. Without batteries, it weighs no heavier than a 300-page paperback book. With batteries, on the other hand, the Game Gear can start to feel like holding a math textbook after a few minutes. Die-hard fans may have swooned over the Game Gear despite its imperfections, but for the rest of us, there was the relatively reliable Game Boy.